Mobius, you saved me. That's a nice car. That's not my car. It's my variant. ka -chow. Hello, Loki fans. Thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. I'm not sure who's currently working at the TVA, but they need to go knock on them Disney doors because they forgot to add my post credit scene to this episode. Like, any of y'all flipping through the credits like... Is it hidden? Where is it? What I'm going to do here for you guys is giving you my Loki episode 5 breakdown. This is the second to last episode of Loki. Specifically though, I'm going to be pointing out all the Loki episode 5 easter eggs because there are some really fun ones this episode. Details you might have missed, continuous speculation to what is going on. But I'm also going to need you guys to give me your spoiler review down below for Loki episode 5. Did you dig this episode? Do you think they're building up to a good finale? Honestly, I feel like if next week's episode lands the mark and ends it pretty good, this might be my favorite Disney Plus series so far. Don't forget to like and subscribe, but let's jump into the episode. So starting off, we open up with this great upside down shot of the TVA, really symbolizing how everything has literally been flipped on its head for the workers of the TVA and even the fake robot timekeepers. I was fully expecting that head to start smiling and winking at the camera. But then we quickly cut to the area that Loki was sent to at the end of episode four. And here is where we get one of our first fun Easter eggs. All of us thinking that this building right here is the Avengers Tower, at least it used to be, because after Spider-Man Homecoming, the building was sold off, and if we zoom in here, at the right moment, we see that the new owner is Quinnage Enterprise, and funny enough, Quinnage Enterprises is the exact same company that bought Stark Towers from Tony Stark in the comic book, so Loki's being very accurate to this future. Gotta admit, though, that really puts a lot of our theories to shame of people who are hoping it was the Baxter building, or maybe it was the new Oscorp Tower, but we also don't know how far into the future this is, or if this is some sort of variant timeline, so there's still hope that in the main MCU that that Avengers Tower could belong to the Fantastic Four or Norman Osborn. Also, did anybody audibly say holy crap when they saw Eliath, the freaking smoke monster? That is a great effect. We then cut to Sylvie and Ravana Rain Slayer hashing it out, talking about what just happened, where we as the audience are trying to figure out right now, okay, did Ravana Rain Slayer know these guys were robots? Is she as surprised as us or is she in on it? And I was kind of 50-50 throughout the episode until the very end, but no, she is clearly still in denial. Niall, she definitely wants answers, but she still believes in the way of the TVA. I'm almost shocked that Sylvie did not go ahead and enchant a couple of people, unlock her mind or unlock Mobius's mind later in this episode. But we cut back to Loki interacting with his variant selves that we saw at the end of episode four, getting a little bit more details into what's happening. And he lets them know that this basically is the end of the timeline, the void, and Eliath eats up everything in this area if you're not constantly moving and avoiding him. And also just want to point out, they could confirm that the alligator is a Loki variant and not the pet of Kid Loki because I had so many of y'all commenting and roasting me saying no that's just a pet it's not a real Loki eat it up y'all but here is where some of the best easter eggs of the entire season happen one of the first ones that caught my eye is we have the helmet of Yellow Jacket which was the villain in the first Ant-Man movie this is kind of a cool easter egg and it kind of makes sense because the way we last saw that villain is he just got sucked into the void into Adams and it looks like parts of his costume ended up on this side of the timeline. Since he just erupted into the quantum realm and the quantum realm does have some time travel involved, it could be that parts of his body scattered across the timeline and this is just where one of his helmets ended up in giant form. That's an awesome Easter egg. Probably what's gonna be everyone's favorite Easter egg and I don't even blame them they actually went ahead and included the Thanos helicopter that is comic accurate. I have no idea why, but in the comics, Thanos has a helicopter with his name, and I guess in the variant timeline, so did another Thanos out there. That has to be my favorite Easter egg in a long time. Bravo to whoever thought of putting that in. Another couple of fun Easter eggs here is as they're moving into the underground base, we get to see the dirt layer and Mjolnir as we know it to be is in this voided timeline. I thought that was a cool little awesome Easter egg until we looked a little further and we have our first freaking appearance of Thor the Frog. 
<laughs> what? Oh, that comes really close to beating the Thanos helicopter. But if you guys don't know, in the comic books, there is a version of Thor who's a frog that is almighty and worthy. Even on the jar, it has labeled his first appearance, Thor number 365. It's just a fun little story. Who knows if it'll ever come into play, but the fact that they created him and put him in the show for a split second made me really happy, especially just seeing his cute little Thor outfit. A couple of more Easter eggs when they finally get inside the lair. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff here I'm gonna miss, but the one I have to point out as a horror fan is the arcade machine Polybus. Hopefully I pronounced that right, but there's an interesting history involved with this arcade machine. There's long been a conspiracy whether this arcade machine was real and people thought it was made by the government to be a test, to be recruited into some sort of program. There's even been other stories that if you play the game, it gives you nightmares or you're experiencing some haunting effects. I suggest you watch the Angry Video Games Nerd episode on that to get a little more information. But it's here in this layer where we start to learn a little bit more about these Loki's which was much needed because there's not much comic information based off these Loki variants But the Loki with the hammer who was wielding his own Mjolnir was going ahead and telling a story how he defeated Iron Man Captain America was wielding six infinity stones and that's what caused his Nexus event to be captured by the TVA Richard E. Grant's story was a little darker But kind of parallel the Loki from the MCU where after he went ahead and fought Thanos on the ship in the beginning of Infinity War He casted such a realistic projection that it even fooled Thanos faking his death in a classic way and then spending the rest of his time isolated until he decided you know what I miss my brother I miss my family I'm gonna go see them and as soon as he stepped off that planet the TVA took him away but from there we come back to Sylvie and Ravana Rain Slayer where we see that Sylvie sees no other option than to prune herself believing what Ravana has told her that pruning will only send you into the dimension where Loki's at in hopes that he's still alive and she can save him successfully making it to this void timeline and coming in contact with none other than Mobius. I figured if Loki was alive at the end of episode 4, of course Mobius would be too, but it was just funny to see him roll up in a pizza car. Also nice to see some real world landmarks in the background, the pyramids, the Egyptian statues. Now as they go on the look for Loki, we cut back to Loki who now meets even more variants of himself that I was really looking forward to. I thought there was going to be a lot more. And sure enough here, it's just some wacky random Loki variants. You can definitely tell by some of the helmets they have here like one with a bike helmet one with the traditional classy Loki helmet that even has a costume made from the comic that was part of a vote for Loki issue I thought this was going to be way more significant it just turned out to be another play of what happens when you try creating plans with other Lokis they all each backstab you or bite your hand off however our remaining loyal Loki still band together escape the madness coming in contact with Sylvie and Mobius we then cut back to the TVA where we get some clear answers that Ravana Rainslayer is is just as lost as us and she wants to find out who's at the head of the TVA but without really dismantling the TVA because she still believes in the cause and we know this because she interrogates Hunter B-15 which is nice to know she's still alive but through this conversation Ravana Rainslayer decides to do the investigating on her own and asks Miss Minute to go ahead and look up as many files as she can about the birth of the TVA which I'm just like girl whoever created the timekeepers also created Miss Minutes. you're basically secretly asking whoever is in charge of the TVA to snoop on the TVA. I don't think that's going to work out. And now I'm starting to think Kang the Conqueror is definitely not showing up and it's probably going to be revealed that it's Miss Minutes. I don't know why. I just have a feeling that's who it's going to be now. But we cut back to our heroes in this void timeline having a little chit chat. I do like how Mobius questions the fact whether Alligator Loki is actually a Loki and maybe he was just faking it to survive but then he says well that is what a Loki would do so maybe it's contradictory. However they come up with a plan to enchant Elioth hoping that he is the guard dog that is stopping the real person in charge of the TVA. As they're looking over in the horizon we do get Thanos' ship from Endgame. We also get a helicarrier in the background just more fun easter eggs to see that i enjoy and before we even get to the final battle i gotta admit i was a little confused here why people were going their separate ways i'm like wait if they have the temp pad why don't they just leave already? Why can't Mobius stay with them? Why are the other Lokis walking away? Maybe it's because it's 2 a.m. and I had my sleepy brain, but I felt like that scene could have played out a little better. Nonetheless, when it came to them going after Elioth and putting their plan in action, 
Man, was it some glorious stuff. Just seeing Richard E. Grant go ahead and fulfill his glorious purpose of creating the best illusion ever created, his Asgard. Absolutely awesome. And even just Loki and Sylvie pointing out, I guess we're stronger than we think. And it would make sense that it's the older Loki that can do this because he's had years and time to practice this kind of stuff. But for a character we just barely met, I thought it was really heartbreaking to see him die. But he definitely went out like a champion. But to finish the enchantment, both Loki and Sylvie must join together. Loki enchanting someone for the first time, being able to do it, and opening up the doorway to hopefully who is behind the TVA, who is pulling all the strings, the end of the timeline. And man, I am floored to why there was not an end credit scene, a post credit scene this episode. Like, they started doing it last week, so you would think they keep doing it to the final episode. Why would you skip an... Marvel, that's not cool. Nonetheless, everything is going to be answered next week. And kind of what old Loki was saying, Richard E. Grant, where he was talking about going to live on his own, away from the pain. I felt like our Loki was really connecting with that and sympathizing. I feel like by the end of the season, he might go ahead and take that advice and go off by himself, live somewhere, maybe with Sylvie, once they take care of whoever's in charge of the TVA. Either way, this was a great episode. I can't wait to see the finale. I want to hear from you guys. Do you have some favorite Easter eggs from this episode? Who do you think will be in charge of the TVA? I don't think it's going to be King Conqueror, but it would be awesome to see, especially with that Ant-Man Easter egg this episode. Maybe. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter at 3C Film Review. As always, I'm Chris. Take care.